mentioned earlier, the uh, focus of this whole program is this environmental inventory. Uh, and uh, we discovered that thanks to Justin Kaur a couple of years ago. When I took over the chairmanship of the committee, I, I looked all over for all of the research that had been done in this island, and there's been a lot. The problem is to find it, um, and find it in one place. And that was one of our objectives, and to review this report. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about what's in it. We did it to find out what this place looked like 40 years ago. There aren't many of us here who were here then. And we'd like to find out what's changed, what has been the effect of development, if any. We'd like to find out what there still is to learn. And we want to see if there are areas for future research that would be particularly fruitful. Uh, well, a summary of this has been uh, has put on the uh, Conservancy website. And as I said, there is a summary of the summary in, in the recent magazine. Well, let me tell you about a few of the things that we found. There are 13 sections to this, and we've reviewed most of them. Uh, the first one, this is the uh, Conservancy uh, mission, by the way, because this is exactly the reason that we started off on this whole road. Uh, it really is a, a central part of the mission of the Conservancy to do exactly this. Well, let's start off with what we know best. The, um, uh, one of the things that the report pointed out was that Keogh Island is one of the few barrier islands in South Carolina that is presently undergoing rapid deposition. Aren't we glad? Thanks to Folly Beach, I think that's true. Uh, during the past century, the island is built seaward at an annual, uh, annual average rate of around 10 feet or more. The southern boundary of Cougar Island was the shoreline during the Civil War. The shoreline has prograded about 2,500 feet during the last century. Most of Kiowa Island was deposited three or 4,000 years ago, so in terms of geological time, I think we're safe. <laughs> uh, but we do know that uh, there are changes uh, in the island for sure. Um, I don't know if you've been to the East End recently, but almost every time I go, uh, the shoreline has changed. There's a new sandbar there, and as I understand it, we're doing some work there uh, sometime in the coming year. So the beach is certainly got undergoing changes, and we watch it very, very carefully. Uh, obviously, a large section of the report had to do with mammals, <laughs> and the bobcat is, is one of our iconic species. The report in 1975 said, unfortunately, it was very limited in abundance. And most of them were at Captain Sam Spit. They're certainly frequent that area now, but they're now spread all over the island. And as we know, Jim Jordan and Aaron Gibbon have devoted a great deal of effort uh, to understanding the bobcat population and have collared uh, something like six of them a year, uh, work that's supported by the Conservancy. The current density is around 30 bobcats on the island. And I think they're pretty, uh, pretty healthy. The population is pretty healthy. Uh, because now we're producing enough bobcats that they begin to leave the island to find other territory. And Frank Brumley told us the other day that one of them reached his plantation at the other end of Watmala. Um, and he asked uh, Jim Jordan, please come down and pick up the call. <laughs> um, we also know that uh, these critters are in abundance. I was just talking with John Mark about how to keep them off the plant. Every time I plant plants, they eat them. Uh, just yesterday, I was walking in my neighborhood, and I saw three eight-point bucks within a block. So we know these things are everywhere. The current density is something around uh, 54, uh, 54 uh, uh, per, per square mile. So there's roughly 500 deer here. Uh, fortunately, the population, I think, when we first came here, was beginning to significantly increase. But now the bobcats have uh, been able to uh, keep that population in check, along with a few automobile accidents and, and other things. Uh, we uh, obviously have one other large mammal that we're not welcoming, and that's the coyote. Uh, Jim and Aaron have tried to trap them. They did trap one. They're very difficult to trap. Uh, they did find one. We put a collar on it, followed it for a year. We knew a lot about it, but uh, the collar, the battery's gone now, so we don't know where it is any longer. Um, but we're continuing that work. We obviously need to observe what's happening with those. There's a, an awful lot of other critters around. Uh, this is a guy eating my redbud tree. <laughs> I was not appreciative of that. Um, there are more squirrels here. And anybody who's rat-proofed their house knows exactly how many small mammals there are. And in fact, that's one of the areas of research that we need to, to push forward on. We, we really know relatively little about how many of these small mammals there are on the island. We know what they are, but we don't really know what their populations are. So that seems to be an area uh, that we have to work in. 
Uh, you'll all be grateful to know that feral hogs are no longer here, but we're always on the watch out. I know our goats. In the 1950s, there was a small herd of horses here, but they acquired a disease, uh, some equine disease, and they were all taken away and sent to horse heaven. Um, there's, uh, as you know, there's always been an attempt to develop the island in accord with preserving habitat, and in this regard, the report noted that the most critical habitat for animals, or mammals, is the pond and salt marsh margins. And since a significant number of Kiowa's mammals are dependent on aquatic systems, these areas are essential for movement, food supply, and cover. The, I, I think many of us don't appreciate the major role that the ponds play in the environment of this island. It's a major asset and a major environmental uh, advantage. Um, we, we know there are lots of trees, and after spending a lot of time in Cape Hatteras, I'm glad to come here. The, the forests and the undergrowth here is just uh, magnificent. The report said that the maritime forest covers the core of the island, and they divided it into five major uh, types. Oak pine, mixed oak and hardwood, palmetto, oak thicket, and wax myrtle thicket. And they went on to say that this is the most stable ecosystem on Kiowa. And it's important because it, quote, modifies climatic conditions and supports abundant terrestrial fauna. Um, I think John Dean has got to point this out, but one of the things the report mentioned was, and I quote, the most important forest type on Kiowa is wind-pruned maritime thicket. And that's why John asked me to do these photographs, and I think he's going to be talking about that uh, in, his, uh, in his remarks. Um, one of the other things that was in this report is really, I, I'm not a, a biologist, environmental chemist or anything, but one of the things in the report that's interesting is that they ran transects of the island, slices down the island. Uh, Dave Ackie said this has been in, in immensely helpful. As they move across the island, they count the trees, the bushes, all the undergrowth, and so on. Um, and he said he still refers to this report in planning the work that he does on the island. And he would love to see us do that all over again, to find out how the island's changed in the course of 40 years. So that's another of the projects that we have on our list of, of things to have a look at. All right, now we come to my favorite part, um, <laughs> the ornithology section. Uh, that's one of the great pleasures of living here, doggone it. I, I spend a lot of time out, lots of us do. We're all in the photography club, and we spend a lot of time photographing all of the, uh, the wonderful birds that are here. Uh, it's just incredible. This is one of my favorite photographs. What could be better than a bird on the... Uh, actually, that hawk was looking for nesting birds. So <laughs> maybe that's not so good. <laughs> Probably the best known of our birds is the painted bunting. Uh, and thanks to Aaron Gibbon again and Sarah Latcher, who did extensive work on these, we know a great deal about the painted buntings on the island. There's always something to be new to be learned, and Aaron and I went out last spring and photographed these. Those are Aaron's fingers um, holding a painted bunting uh, because he was banding them, weighing them, finding out their general health. One of the things you may not know is that Aaron Gibbon established one of the major bird banding stations on the East Coast. Uh, if you walk down the beach in the morning um, past Beach Walker Park, you'll see his truck parked there. And they're out there at sunrise every morning. Aaron and three students who are supported by the Conservancy uh, are banding, capturing and banding and checking the health of every bird they can find. And we have now uh, amassed an enormous amount of information about migratory birds, forest birds, and so on. It's a marvelous thing, and, and Kiowa is unique in that. There's just no other place that does this sort of work. So if you have a chance, uh, talk to Aaron and see if you could visit someday, because it's really, really interesting. Um, and my favorite bird here is this one, the red knots. They come through every March to May in flocks of hundreds, thousands. Uh, walk on the beach someday around that time and you'll just be uh, impressed. Uh, these guys have come here from Patagonia and they're on their way to the Arctic. And we are so blessed that they stop here and feed. They sit here for a while. Lots of them go to Devo Bank, just offshore here but many, many of them come here. So just walk around, but please don't disturb them. I see tourists lots of times running in the middle of the flocks. And these guys just flew here from Brazil, probably, uh, and they need the rest of it. Um, this is another one. I talked to Paul about this just yesterday. Wilson's plovers, I, think, I hope this is really easy to confuse these with semi-palmated plovers. These are not uncommon, but there are not many around. Um, and uh, there is a nice article in naturally Kiowa about the Wilson's plover, so have a look there. 
Um, okay, well, we finally got to our other icon iconic species, the loggerhead turtle. The report said, and I hope the turtle patrol is here, the report said the loggerhead turtle is perhaps the single most important animal frequenting Kiowa. So that's why we spend so much time in it. Uh, as you know, last year was a banner year, over 400 nests, something like almost 29,000 hatchlings made it into the ocean. So it was an incredible, an incredible year. But now I, we just found something truly amazing. Um, we heard um, last summer that there had been a group of students here in the early 1970s that did research for about four years on loggerhead turtles. And uh, somewhere buried in the report, it says there was a turtle hatchery here. And I had no idea. I had never heard of such a thing. Last night, we got the movie of, their, of the research that they did. Uh, John Mark knew all about this. He told us about it the, in the summer. But we just last night saw the movie. And we're going to show it to you sometime this spring when we can get John back and the, and the students who did this work uh, 45 years ago. It is astonishing. They photographed, filmed, turtles coming ashore, digging nests. They took the eggs from the turtle as she deposited them in the nest, put them in a bucket, and put them in a hatchery. So it is something that I think you will never see in any other place, and we'll show it to you this coming spring. That's a tease. <laughs> um, reptiles. We, uh, Lord knows we have a lot of those around. But what's interesting to me is that the report says there's 100 common reptile species on the mainland, uh, mainland but only 30 of them on Kiowa, reptiles and amphibians. The most common snakes here are black racers, which you've seen, yellow rat snakes. The, at the time of the report, apparently the most common snake of all was a cotton moccasin, a uh, water moccasin. And I'm perfectly happy that uh, I haven't seen one myself. I have seen some copperheads uh, smushed in the road, but that's about it. Well, we, uh, one of the reasons I'm interested in the reptile population, that I read a few years ago that reptiles are an indicator species in climate change. And I would very much like us to pursue some studies along those lines just to, as, a, as a barometer for how our environment is changing. And the most abundant amphibian we have on the island is this one. And you've heard them. Their, their, their voice is far greater than their size. They're about as big as your thumb. Those are tree frogs. Uh, this one I photographed on the windshield of my car. <laughs> he uh, was driving down the street and he landed on the windshield. <laughs> it's a wonderful. Anyway. And, and finally, the thing that tourists love the most, uh, the alligator, uh, the, at the time of the report, they were around 100, they said, but I think uh, the latest census is about 500. And, and I just assumed there's so many of them around, they're so common that we knew lots about them. It turns out we, there's lots of things we don't know about alligators, the American alligator. And so we actually are looking for somebody to come here and do some research on the American alligator, of all things. I thought that was probably the most common thing we had. Well, thank you. That, that, was, that was the material, just a highlight of a few of the things in that report. And if you're interested, you can look at the, uh, the summary. So let's move along. Um, and um, I'm going to have uh, John Mark first uh, make some remarks. Uh, John has spent a lot of time at Kiowa over the years. And then uh, Mark from Mars. So I'll need to do a transfer again here and start your slides.